Hello! Welcome to the Top Down Sweater Construction Seminar. My name is Sandra Gutierrez of Nomad Stitches and today I'm going to be your instructor. I hope you enjoy! What exactly is a top-down sweater? Now, a top-down sweater just means that it's constructed from the top, working your way downwards, which means either neckline, front, or back, and then you work towards the body. Sometimes that includes the sleeves and the yoke, but not necessarily. That is in contrast to the bottom up construction, which means you start with the body and the sleeves, and then you join everything at the top. All right, so there are a few advantages and disadvantages to a top-down construction. Let's talk about the negatives first. The biggest disadvantage of a top-down construction is the lack of structure. So usually you work with wide yokes that don't have any kind of seams to keep things in place, which can lead to maybe more oversized or loose garments, um, but they look really pretty, so uh, you kind of have to choose. <laughs> the other disadvantage is that you have to carry your whole project as you work on it. When you work in smaller pieces that you join together afterwards, you can, for example, take your sleeve with you and work on the sleeve, and you don't have to carry every single piece in one go to work on it, which does mean bigger bulk to carry around if you're one of those that you like to crochet on the go. But when we look at the advantages, we also have the fact that when you have your whole project in one go, it means that when you are finished, you are finished. There is no seaming, there is no joining things. All you have to do is weave in the ends and block your project and it is ready to go. Another huge advantage, and this is probably the thing that makes me make most of my designs top down is that it is really easy to adjust because you can try it on as you go. Especially with crochet with knitting, you have your needles and you have to kind of figure out how to try it on with needles. But with crochet, <laughs> you just take off your hook and put it on and see how it feels. That is a huge advantage because if you want to adjust the body length or the sleeve length or even the yoke depth or armhole depth, you can easily do that as you go by trying things on and just modifying the pattern to fit your body. When you are working with pieces, you have to finish each piece as you go and then join them and then you get to see if it fits, which can be a bit of a gamble, you know, especially if your gauge is a little bit off or if your body is not exactly like the pattern was designed for, that can be a little bit tricky, but you know, something to consider. So yeah, personally, as a designer and as a maker, I much prefer to do top-down garments where I just have control over the adjustments and the modifications, and also I could try it on as I go. So yeah, those are the advantages and disadvantages of a top-down sweater. Now, if this sounds like something that you would like to try, now let me break down into the kinds of top-down sweaters that there are. This is not a comprehensive list, but it's the majority of them, and I think it's gonna give you a good idea of which one to choose for your own personal tastes. All right, so the first type of top-down sweater construction that I'm going to talk about is a circular yoke. This is my candle pullover, and it happens to be a circular yoke. A circular yoke. What a circular yoke is, is simply starting from the neckline in a circle, circular form, you kind of make your yoke grow as a circle until it kind of reaches your armhole depth, and then you divide the body, and then at the very, very end, you work the sleeves in those openings of the yoke. So it's all worked in one nice big shape. I love circular yokes. <laughs> it's really fun to work, especially with nice fun designs, either color work or lace like this one. And they're really easy to make. It's great for beginners. Um, however, there are a few things that you need to consider. The problem with circular yokes is that we are not a perfectly shaped square or circle, right? We are people, we have different lengths at the back and the front. So when you don't have short rows at the back, like this one has short rows here, that kind of makes this yoke go a bit lower at the front and a bit higher at the back. That kind of covers your back a little bit and it doesn't choke you. If you don't have that, then you do have a problem of 
chokiness and you know expecting you to fit in a square peg when we are not squares we are people right so when you choose a design to make make sure that it has some kind of adjustment unless it has a white neckline and you don't mind showing a little bit more of your back than the front all right so that's something to consider when choosing a round yoke sweater design another thing is that not everyone does the short rows in the same way i usually do them at the very top right under my neckline but other designers like to put them in the middle other designers like to lengthen the back a little bit mm -hmm. so all of those are ways of also improving the fit of a round yoke sweater so just make sure that there is some kind of technique added to the round yoke sweater that you would like to make so that it fits right okay so it doesn't matter how pretty it is but if it doesn't fit right you're not gonna wear it another thing to consider about circular yokes is that they're not always a perfect circle so you see those pictures where you have a nice perfect circle on the ground and like some people put even like flowers in the middle or something like sometimes that happens but it's not always like that again because we are not a perfect circle so if your sweater project that is a round yoke sweater doesn't look yoke perfect for a picture don't worry okay it just means that it might just fit well so make sure you try on your yokes to ensure the proper fit for your body okay Another issue with um, round yoke sweaters that you get is that sometimes you get a little bit of rippling around the yoke and that's just because of the way they grow. That rippling might just occur naturally because of the way that the stitches are spread out. But if this is happening to you, don't worry. Give it a really good block before you work the body. That means either wet block it or steam block it and just kind of stretch out those stitches. Let them grow and expand and you'll see how that rippling will kind of even out with some blocking and with some wearing now if it's too much rippling then there might be an issue with the design or may, there might be an issue with your stitch counts and you might have put a few too many stitches where you shouldn't have so go back and make sure that that is correct but i think those are the main issues with around yoke sweaters and that basically covers that kind of constructions if you are looking for examples of a round yoke sweater, I have <laughs> loads of designs actually, but here are a few. We have the Taroko sweater, we have the Mosaic jumper sweater, uh, we have quite a few that I've designed. So I'm going to put them up here for you to look at the pictures and you can find all the links in the description as well. And there's loads of great designers that have created beautiful round yoke sweaters as well that you can try out. All right, let's move on to our next kind of construction, and that is raglan construction. Raglans are also super, super popular. And the best part about raglans is like, just like the round yoke sweater, they work from top down, usually not always, but usually top down, you can try it on and it fits really quite nicely. Different to a circular yoke, a raglan construction is more of a rectangle or a square. So you start from the neck and you find your four corners to divide the front, sleeves, and back. So it looks something like this, like a nice little rectangle. And then you increase as you go, evenly at the front and the sleeves and the back until you have your full yoke. Now there's a little bit of a problem with that basic raglan construction. And that problem is that it doesn't include size inclusivity because necks don't vary that much by size. I mean, a little bit, you know, an extra small neck will be slightly different from a 5XL neck. However, busts will vary a lot. So an extra small bust will be a lot smaller than a 5 extra large bust. So if you increase from a regularly standard neckline all the way in the same rhythm for a 5XL than an extra small, the extra small will have a very, very narrow yoke. And the 5 extra large will have a really, 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 really long yoke. It will probably hit their waist. Now, that is an issue with the sign. As a maker, it's not your fault that the designer didn't consider that. But maybe you should find a sweater that is constructed slightly different or that accounts for the size inclusivity and the difference in sizes. To do that, 
designers might do it differently, but you basically have to adjust the rhythm in which things are increased, either increase faster at the body than the sleeves or increase at a different rate. So not every row or not every other row always and for all sizes. The way I usually do my raglan sweaters is that I will just write a table for each size and each size will have increase here, don't increase here, increase here, don't increase here. And it will tell you exactly where to increase. So they're all done at a different rhythm. Another thing you can find when it comes to raglans is find compound raglan sweaters. Now a compound raglan sweater, unlike a raglan sweater, does not increase evenly. So raglans, either every row, every other row, every third row, but it's done the same throughout the whole yoke. A compound raglan doesn't do that. It might increase a bit faster at the beginning, then slower, and then a bit faster at the end. Now, compound raglans are my favorite kind of raglans because they do give a lot more shape, they account for size inclusivity, and they just fit generally better. Um, when it comes to raglan sweaters, I have quite a few. I have my Confetti TK pullover and I have Stripey, for example. They're both kind of compound raglans, especially the Confetti TK. Um, the Stripey pullover is not really a compound raglan. It goes quite evenly precise, but again, just like I said before, it accounts for size inclusivity. So each size increases at a different rate throughout. So that makes sure that the fit is right, that you don't have yokes that end up super short or super long and that it fits every body around. And like I said before, you can always adjust for yourself. If you try it on and you feel like it's too deep, then figure out if you need to add more increases quickly at the front or at the sleeves. If you need to change the underarm width, you have control over what you make. Even though patterns are written down, you have control. So one stitch here, one stitch there will not change the overall look, but it will make a big difference to your body and to your fit. So make sure that it fits your body and that you're happy with the way it looks. Now there are other constructions that I like to use when it comes to top down. One of them is very basic and I don't use it very often because I like to add shaping to my garments, but this is basically when you do a rectangle for the back and then rectangles from the front and then you join at the body and that creates a nice little rectangle so that's a very basic structure but you can also use the same idea to create straps and make a top down tank top like my secret garden top but from there you can also create things that are a bit more shapely for example if you look at my mosaic cardigan or at my vesuvius tee it's kind of the same idea where you start with the back, but you have nice shoulder shaping and you work the whole back. And then from that shoulder shaping, you work the front and then you join at the underarms and work the body. And finally, at the end, you work the sleeves at the sleeve openings. So that is a nice drop shoulder with really, really lovely shoulder shaping that is also worked top down. It can also be very much adjusted to your own body and that you can try on as you go. Another modification of that is more of a tailored fit with set in sleeves like my Coco jacket or my Camellia Cardi. So that one is also worked with the same shoulder shaping as the Mosaic Cardigan or as my Vesuvius T, where you start at the back and you work a little bit of the back, then you work the front and then you work all the way around the yoke, including the sleeves. And that creates a lovely tailored fit with satin sleeves that are kind of satin sleeves, but more like faux satin sleeves because you don't actually sew them in. But that shaping is just so lovely. It fits really, really well around your body. And it just looks like a proper tailored garment, you know? And again, just like all the top down sweaters, the advantage of this kind of garment design is that you get to adjust as you go. So in my Coco or Camellia cardigan, for example, I have tables where you have ticks of where your increases go. Now, if you, for example, say, okay, my shoulder measurement is a size three, but my bust measurement is a size four, then you can just add ticks where you need them and add more increases so that your bust can fit a size four. And that's such an easy adjustment, isn't it? To make sure that your clothes fit your body instead of you trying to fit 
to your clothes, which is very important to remember. Um, but yeah, those are basically all of the constructions that I use when it comes to top down. There are other ways of doing top down with um, saddle shoulders, for example, but I don't really do that. And I haven't seen many of those when it comes to crochet, but these are the basic ones that you will see a lot with designers. So just keep an eye on those things I mentioned, you know, trying to get good shaping around shoulders and around neckline, um, making sure that you adjust the measurements to your body so either add space at the underarm take away space at the underarm you know just try it on and play with it now sometimes the signs will have charts for example all over like my said jumper that one has charts all over so you do have to make sure that your stitch count matches the pattern or matches a multiple of the pattern so that the charts fit but in something like this where you know after your yoke is done you can have as many stitches as you want here. If you want a wider fit, just add stitches at the underarm. If you want a narrower fit, just take them away. Not too many, but you know, just enough so that it fits your body. You can also add waist shaping to make your garments a bit smaller at the waist and hip shaping to make your garments a bit bigger at the hips. And again, all of that comes with the wonders of trying on your clothes as you go. All right, I think that's all I have for you when it comes to top-down sweater constructions. I hope that this little seminar has helped you understand a little bit more about the different constructions and it helps you make the right choices when it comes to what projects to make. And if you would like to try out some of my patterns, please do so. You can find me as Nomad Stitches on Instagram or Ravelry and I am at nomadstitches.com or plyful.com as well where we have a community only for crocheters. So I hope you join us. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.